What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a spoiler debate about Suspiria. This is the 2018 version of Luca Guadagnino's new reimagining of Suspiria. I got some great guests here, and we're all breaking this down and going into teams because two of us think this is a masterpiece, me being one of the ones. And the other two either were kind of just thinking, oh, yeah, it was fine, or absolutely hated it. So let's go to ladies first. Casey, how are you doing today? Let's, let's introduce you. Yeah, hello. Uh, I'm not doing too badly. Um, I love waking up at 6 a.m. to debate movies with people. It's great. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, no, so um, you want me to tell you how I feel about Suspiria? Yeah, just a little, a little bit. Actually. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so I guess I saw it the other day. I hadn't seen the original one first, so I went and saw this version. Um, yeah, I, spoiler alert, I'm on the negative side today. Um, I was a little bit underwhelmed by it. I think there are still parts that were enjoyable and were better than others, but ultimately uh, I watched the old one yesterday and preferred that a lot more. So uh, more on that to come. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And going over to here, we got 3C Films here. This man does all these ending explain videos, so he might be having <laughs> a little bit more notable stuff to say. Or different particular stuff. Oh, how you doing, man? Introduce yourself. Hey. Thank you, Zach. Well, yes, my name is Chris with 3C Films. I got to see Superior about a week ago now, and I think it's going to be the most overrated movie of the century. Not 2018, of the century. I, I do have great things to say about it. I do find some things masterful, but overall, I, I really don't get it. And I, I swear, I keep saying this, I think my theater showed me the wrong movie because everyone just loves this thing. Hey, hey, may maybe so. Maybe your theater showed you like Smallfoot or something. But <laughs> then we're going to over the man who's on my team. That is Griff. How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going, man? Glad to be back over here. I don't know when the last time I was over here was. Anyways, I love this film. I made a video called Why Suspiria is my favorite film of 2018. So there. Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. I, I love it. It's great. All right. So there we go, guys. And obviously, I, I'm on the part where I this film... I, at first, I walked out and I really liked it. I really liked it, but I wasn't at the loving category. Where then, my friend kept talking about it. And me and Griff talked about it. And I was like, you know what? Fuck! Like, I don't have like I have one issue with the movie really, and th and that's it. And I think it's a lot of yeah. issues with what a lot of people are going to have, and we'll talk about it. But I really love this movie. It's not my favorite of the year, but it is my top five for sure. But I loved it. So how we're going to start this? We gave our initial reaction. We're going to go into the acting. We're going to go into the story. We're going to go into the direction, the length, and the ending. First off, we're going to be talking about the acting, and each one we're just going to pretty much spend around three to five minutes on, nothing huge, nothing much, and each person's going to kind of get their one share to say about it. We'll argue a bit, if we feel different about something, and if we don't, then hey, whatever. Again, this is like a spoiler discussion slash spoiler review. We're debating, and then of course we want people down in the comments to kind of decide who was in the right and who was in the wrong. This should be fun unless some asshat comments down below and says this was garbage and didn't, <laughs> didn't understand it. Sorry, Chris. I, that may be you. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let's, see. Start, let's start with the acting, and I'm going to throw it over to 3C Films. You were the one who, Chris, you didn't like it as much as us. Mm -hmm. So why, you and Casey, together, what, what, did, what was the acting like for you? Did you like it? Did you no. not? No, the, the acting... Amazing. It, above average for sure. And I mentioned, you know, Dakota Johnson, my first introduction was uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Now I have a partner who loves the movie and has read the books and all that. So I always get dragged along to see those movies. And I hated her in, in those films. And this movie redeems herself completely. I, I fell in love with her. I, I told her she's even sexier in this movie than she is in Fifty Shades. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, very much. Um, Tilda Swinton, Stole the show in all her scenes. Like I said, this is spoiler filled. Uh, one character in particular, I'm sure we'll talk about later, but uh, her character alone, Madame Blanc, really great work there. Uh, Chloe Moretz, I did wish she was in it more, but the stuff she was in for a bit, while it was a little weird, I also enjoyed. So, so acting for me was was great, and that was not a negative to the film at all. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. And then Casey, what about you? What, what what was the acting? Was anyone weak in particular for you? Um, I mean, I I guess. Dakota Johnson's definitely come very far from the Fifty Shades movies. She's definitely getting there, like a combination of a few of the things that she's been doing recently. And she definitely was good in this one. I just don't feel like she's there yet for me. I think she still has a little bit of, still has a little bit of oomph. I think that's mostly for me because 
in this film, she wasn't really the most emotional. And so I feel like she didn't have, she didn't need the biggest range for this film. And I think that's where it falls flat a bit. Um, everyone else was amazing though. They all did. I yeah thought they all did genuinely wonderful jobs. And so did she. It's just not perfect. So yeah. Okay. And Griff, of course. Yeah, I kind of going off of that, I would say that the character written didn't require her to be the most emotive person. Although when she was presented with scenarios that were like, you know, kind of taxing specifically the dream stuff, she definitely brought her A game. She came to the table to play. I mean, she was great in Bad Times at the El Royale. I think she was even better in this. She did a lot more physical acting. Uh, the dancing especially. Now, I mean, she, she was a dancer for 12 years, so it kind of helped her out in the role, but she hadn't danced in some time. And so for like the two years leading up to filming this, she was like hardcore training um to be a dancer um so that she so that she could perform the scenarios and she was like she was that good and i don't think that physical side of the performance should be overlooked because of how effective it is in a lot of the film's subtext so yeah she was phenomenal i absolutely loved her by far my favorite performance of hers and I would say definitely her best by a long shot. Um, it's really turned. She has really turned her career around, especially because I I didn't think she was great. I mean, no one really thinks she's great in the Fifty Shades stuff, but just seeing where she was like a very small role in the Social Network to now being like the main central figure in the remake of Suspiria, it's kind of amazing. Uh, you guys already touched on it. Tilda Swinton is phenomenal. Um, I actually even even though there are parts to the uh, the male character she plays that I don't like, I don't think her performance is the issue with that. It's more so the fact that she was just kind of her her casting is a little um you can tell it's her when she starts talking and it takes you out of it a little bit. But that being said, her performance as Dr. Klemper is excellent. Even through all the prosthetics, she, like she she becomes this old man and it's it's phenomenal. But her as Madame Blanc is obviously like the the prime role for her. And like um her dynamic with Dakota Johnson, I think is phenomenal as well so yeah oh they, also i just quickly want to give a shout out to mia goth who yeah. i i actually love yeah. she may yeah, have actually yeah truthfully she may have actually been my second favorite behind dakota johnson in the film personally i think mia goth was my favorite in the whole film yeah, I yeah. she just i think for her personally i think she had the most range in the whole film emotional wise and just every single thing that you got from her in general mia goth is she was in a cure for wellness which i i a cure for wellness i've come around a little bit more on over the past year i've liked oh, really? it you didn't, more. you didn't like that initially uh, i liked it i didn't love it okay. though and i've started to come around on it more where i'm more intrigued to kind of go back and rewatch it um but mia goth was one of the best parts about that film and again i didn't know she yeah. was in here um an actress who i have actually i thought for the small amount of screen time who was in here we haven't mentioned yet is chloe grace moretz i thought she was excellent yeah. in those small tidbits that she was in here yeah. yeah also did you guys know tilda swinton played helena marcos in here too yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah that's, I found that that's, that yesterday. Anybody that's, could have played that though. I think. Yeah, anyone could <laughs> anyone could have played her and I know she was. so I was just looking it up right now. Yeah. And that's yeah, she must like prosthetics. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, 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 I first of all, I like I think the depiction of Helena Marcos was fine. Every, everything was fine about that, except for the fact that she had like stereotypical old lady glasses on. That, that was a creative choice that I was just like, I kind of laughed a little bit at. And this is coming mm -hmm. from someone who loves the film, but that was just kind of like, what are we doing here? That is like <laughs> yeah. really just not yeah, great. I mean, you guys know that um, the lady who played Susie's mom, Dakota Johnson's mom, was actually death at the end too. Yes. So... Yes. I like I like what Luca Guadagnino did there, and I again, I guess now we can go into the story because that's what we're talking about next is the story for here. And I think that the main thing we should talk about is this big subplot with uh, Doctor Klemper. Uh, it took me out of it definitely. Um, I wish I wish I did not know Tilda Swinton was playing that character though, and I wonder if that would have helped. I knew something still would have been off, but uh. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't know that she. I had no idea until after I'd watched it. So. Um, so it didn't yeah, bug you, Casey. I, no, it didn't bug me. I <laughs> just thought it was a dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I had no idea, and then I was. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Looking into it afterwards, and I was like, mm. 
okay so yeah it didn't bother me and it didn't take me out of it as much as like yeah probably other people um yeah it's still i don't know i mean it was a necessary part of the story i think because it represented a lot of things but at the same time it was one of the slower part well the whole movie was like <laughs> okay but um but yeah yeah, I think we're all loving it and hating it for for different reasons because I I'm gonna say the and I can never pronounce it Klemper how how do you say Klemper I say Klemper so yeah Klemper. Yeah. yeah I got a lot of hate for calling him Kempler but uh, anyway <laughs> yeah all right let's see them pronounce it <laughs> yeah exactly uh, but anyways he was the saving grace for me in the movie he's the only reason I stayed in my butt for the whole two and a half hours it, yes I. I I love that performance. I loved everything, yeah. and especially that ending scene where yeah. they're having that conversation yeah. that was one. the best. And I, I mean, I knew ahead of time going in that that was Tilda Swinton. And at, at moments, yes, I could hear her voice in it. But overall, I, I feel she created a character, and I was captivated by it. Uh, yeah. His story, his, his emotion behind it, the whole cottage, him going back to it, then thinking his wife did survive and came back, and then that was taken away from him. All that stuff, I love. That it's. Uh, I guess more traditional horror for me in that sense or a psychological aspect in affecting that character. But uh, to me, that's what I really enjoyed and was the, the saving part for me in the movie. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll piggyback off of that because I, I loved his character. I just, I, the fact that Tilda Swinton was playing the character, I okay. think, I, I don't know if like me knowing that would have like not knowing that beforehand would have um, affected you affected me. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's just one of those. Maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't have. I mean, his voice was definitely very high pitched for a man, even an older man. Let's be honest. I guess so. But yeah. um, that being said, um, yeah, his arc was riveting because he was the link to the outside world. He was, he yeah. was necessary for what yeah. was going on. And so when he, you know, um, interacts with the, the coming of witches and whatnot, um, and seeing how what they're going through is paralleling what's going on in the outside world and whatnot, him being that link, I think was super integral. Um, yep. and the revelation that happens at the end where we find out his wife died, um, and how she died was totally yeah. heartbreaking. Um, and yeah, just like going back and thinking on it a little bit more his arc is so crucial to the film i mean it's like yeah. the last shot of the movie so clearly it is um well it's one of the first characters you meet too in the film absolutely yeah yeah, yeah, yeah he's so, a stop to end and i think that's yeah. something that enhances the story is because at first I, I i when i walked out of the film again i really liked it but i wasn't in love with it yet and mm -hmm. As I thought about it more, I was like, oh, well, did you really need the old man? And then I think about it, I'm like, but if you would have taken it out, I think it would have taken out a lot of the essential emotion. Because in a sense, I don't yeah. care about Dakota Johnson's character. And yeah, I mean, like, I do, but not as emotionally invested as I was with Dr. Joseph, like, in there. Mm -hmm. he, you, yeah. you were invested with his character because you want to see where this ends up going with him and how much he cares about Chloe Grace Moretz's character, Patricia, yeah. and where she ends up going. Yeah. But the well, whole also, overall, but I, yeah, what were you saying? Oh, I was going to say, I would also say that if you take his character out and you're trying to make the connections to um, war-torn Ber war -torn Berlin, it would almost come off as just, like, even more jarring than it already does. Like, they would they would cut to, like, news segments um, yeah. every now and then and then interweave it into what's going on with uh, Dr. Klemper. And to some, that might be jarring. For me, it worked. It, it was just yeah. kind of like a transition outwards. You take his character out of that, and it almost becomes just like a WTF. Like, like what is the point of this? And it's almost yeah. a little too on the nose. And, and I so think it was smart of Guadagnino to add that it, in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Expanding yeah. more, uh, yeah. expanding more on the story. How did you guys feel about the the, the way it was told? Because uh, it wasn't really a linear story uh, story form. It is more towards the second and final act, but. Uh, it is told in patches, so we're getting parts in the background, I mean, flashbacks, and then fast yeah. forward in the modern time. Uh, to me, I could have done without that. I think I have actually would have preferred a, a linear story time. That just felt more to me like the film trying to be confusing, trying to be like, I'm, I'm giving you pieces of the puzzle, and then at the end, you got to put it together. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that it was nonlinear, to be honest. I mean, there were flashbacks. Yeah. All, all of the flashbacks were really pertaining to you know, backstory bits of information for the character, mm -hmm. especially like Tilda Swinton. And we learn a little bit about Dakota Johnson. None of it felt like it was really detracting from the main story. It would just kind of be like, okay, so now they're asleep and now they're having these dreams and, and shit is going mm -hmm. on. And that's kind of like where we're getting these little like glimpses at their backstory. Yeah. But for the most part, I, I, I thought it was pretty traditionally straightforward. Um, and the ambiguous yeah. nature of it, at least for me was in line with, 
like you know the original Suspiria, and even even though this film is very much not like the original one, it does like invoke it at times and like invokes the same feeling you get. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that yeah, I mean that that didn't really bother me. I was kind of expecting that going in. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I, I actually preferred the way it was told. I again, I'm on Griff's side, um, not just because he's on my team and all, but just because <laughs> I, I didn't, it didn't, well. it didn't like for me, like films that are not in chronological order is like Beautiful Boy this year. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that yet, but that uh, film's not a chronological order, and I feel like it was needed. But Suspiria, I, I saw this movie, and again, I like even though like when I came out, I really liked it, but I was just sitting there, and I was like, what would I have changed? And I just tell myself, I'm nothing. Like, there's nothing that I could have literally gone to this film yeah. and changed to it, yeah. and to make it more fitting for me. I, I think this is very much a film that you're either gonna love or you hate, or maybe kind of be in the middle. But I don't think it's a film that, in general, it's so different and it's unique that I think if someone does see it, it's the unique experience is what mesmerizes you overall while watching the movie. Well, it's kind of like, um, you're right. Cause it's kind of like when, uh, when I saw the neon demon, I love the neon demon. I know some people who think that movie is absolute trash <laughs> and I completely get it. Um, but it's just one of those things where it's like, it's so hypnotic and I'm like, I love the subtext of it. Um, even though neon Demon's a little bit more on the nose than this one. Um, it, it's just one of those things where it's like stylistically you either buy into what's going on or you don't yeah. and no one is right or wrong in the situation it's just like a personal preference yeah yeah but i like the story I, I i think the story was well told i think yeah again i like well, how would you have wanted it chris or casey like would you have wanted to change the story in any different way would you rather them focus on a different character more or not um Honestly, my favorite part of the movie was like the story. Um, not not in maybe not so much the story, but the things that are actually represented by the story. I think um, it was definitely for me. I felt like my biggest issue with it is that I feel like it dragged a lot. Like there wasn't a lot happening, and it just kind of went on and on and on. And I got a bit frustrated by that, as I always do, because I have a very short attention span. But <laughs> the story, like the like the representation of the witches and mm -hmm. comparing witch covens to dance troops is so like it's perfect. Um, although um, one thing that I would say is that dance troops. They're not always that friendly to each other, but anyway, but the point is, is that like combining like that competitiveness with also the idea of having to work together because a dance is not a dance. I mean, it can be a dance with one person, but it doesn't work unless there are lots of moving parts. And that's the same with witchcraft. It's the same when it like comes back to feminism, because I feel like there's a lot of that in this film as well. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, I was like, I haven't quite made my video about this yet, but I'm going to talk about this. But um, basically it comes down to the fact that in dance troops, in witchcraft and in feminism, women or people are basically taught to be competitive with each other, particularly with girls, because we're constantly fighting for a single place in a film, a single place in a writer's room, a single place in a boardroom, theoretically. And so it's the same in dance troops because they're constantly fighting each other out for that protagonist role. And it's the same with witchcraft as well. Like witches are just, they want to, you know, they want to be the best, but at the same time, witches work better in groups. They work better in threes. Like that's something mm -hmm. that we see in Shakespeare, in Charmed, in Sabrina this week. So it's <laughs> all of it working together. To me, that was my favorite part of it. Um, the story itself and all of the things that it represented, um, even the war stuff, I'm not as knowledgeable about that as I am about witches, because I love witches. But, you know, I, that was the strongest part for me. It's the other areas that it fell down. So, okay. But, yeah. yeah. With, with me on what I would change or anything, I haven't mentioned this uh, yet when talking about the movie, but I honestly feel like it, it's two movies here. I, I'd, I'd love to see someone break down how much was given to the Dr. Kempler story and how much was given uh, to the dance company story. Because I honestly feel like both were given an equal amount of time and I would I would call them both subplots that complete a movie together. And I think that's the detriment to me that, that really hurt me. It's either focus on Doctor trying to figure this missing person case out, then discovering it switches, 
or make it all about the witches and then put in elements of Dr. Kempler. Uh, I think for you guys who really loved it, you guys were looking at it from the witch's point of view and, and then Dr. was just like a, a little seasoning on top of the movie. To me, where I was watching it with Dr. Kempler was the main focus and the witches were the seasoning. Yeah, I mean, I was more with the witches, and I saw Kempler as just a side plot. Yeah, I, yeah. I, um, I would honestly say that I, I bet you, if if you were bringing it down to me, because they they cut in between a lot. You get like five minutes or like ten minutes uh, of the dancing, and then you go to Doctor Kempler, and he's doing something. I honestly feel like they were given equal amounts of time to throw out their story. Um, yeah, but I yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I I don't I I don't I I think both are very integral with each other that like it's not a matter of me focusing on one or the other because mm -hmm. it's like that's the story. If like what what Kempler is doing, his investigation is directly tied into what's going on yeah. at the Witch's Coven. Correct. However, yes, correct. his subplot is finding out what happened to his wife, and that is very much a subplot because that's not yeah. really the focus of the film at all it, it's almost too though he he's looking for chloe moretz because I, i'm assuming they've grown a relationship because it seems right. like they're familiar with each other at the beginning of the movie like yeah. she's been going to him for some therapy right. and then out of nowhere it turns to him uh going looking well, for his wife well and i would i i would say that the, the reason it turns to that is because he's trying to find her because he's compelled by not being able to find his wife. And so there's like, there's a direct correlation sure. there, yeah. but, um, he doesn't want to let another person down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. what I'm saying then, so in, in your mind, Griff, who, who is, who are the, if you had to rank the top three main characters, who would they be? Of course, Dakota Johnson would be number one. I understand that. Yeah, it would be, uh, Dakota Johnson, Tilda Swinton and, uh, Klemperer. And then if I could go one more, I'd say Mia Goth. Cause she is a section in yeah. there where she's, like, yeah. but but she's kind of in tandem with Klemper when they start working together, and she starts discovering what's going on. Yeah. She's kind of exactly. like the kind of like the audience in that regard. Can I be exactly. honest? I agree with this I, list? Bro, I would actually. So I'm pretty much in there. I would move mm -hmm. Tilda under Mia Goth. I'd move Mia Goth up one and Tilda next because, again, like once they start working, I don't like. I still see as the witch was like the main, like the whole dance coven and all that was still yeah. the main part of the story. This is overall just like a gorgeous, gory mess of a movie. And for me, in the most beautiful of ways, it is in a sense, this story like just mesmerized me where I was just enhanced. I wanted the film to be longer, to be honest. Oh I could have had it longer. <laughs> yeah, I, I could have sat there and watched more mm -hmm. too. I think it was no. just like the, it was a very hypnotic and methodical pace, which I get not being, not like, you know, having it, work for you like i everyone has yeah. different attention spans no, and like, no, no. not that but for whatever reason um like it was kind of just like the way he was moving the camera and like the fact that he was taking his time um and the fact that uh you know while he was going through some of this stuff that was a little ambiguous you you were like trying to figure it out so he's almost like giving you time to contemplate what's going on and so i think it justifies that two and a half hour long runtime yeah. oh, which way you saying that this kind of moves us into our next spot which is about the directing by luca guadagnino oh. now call me by your name yeah. if i would have seen that before i did my top 10 list that most likely probably would have been my favorite film of last year i loved call me by your name great movie i yeah. think it is fantastic and the slow pace, the long shot, like everything Guadagnino did in that film was excellent. Now with Suspiria, I think his director's stamp and his staple is still in this movie, but he directed it so differently that just shows how wide of a director he is. Now, I've never seen any of his other films. I'll be flat out honest. I've seen Call Me By Your Name and I've seen this film. I Maybe I've seen other ones. I just don't know what else he's really directed, but... He, I think what he does with Suspiria... Oh, okay, I'm looking at it now. I've seen the bigger <laughs> splash, too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, but I, I, I really do think Call Me By Your Name and Suspiria are, like, fantastic in so many different ways, but they're so different. And for him to get this essence it's, of Suspiria... It's interesting you say that, because I, I would say they're more similar than you would think. Yeah, they, they okay. Kind of, yeah, like, aesthetically, they're both very dreamlike. He uses... I mean, granted, camera movements differ depending on what you're trying to yeah. shoot, but like you, you compare the two. He has a very fluid camera mo movement in both films. It, both films are hypnotic in different ways. This is mm. very much like a unsettling, like 
mysterious kind of way and the other one is like remembering a summer you had with an old lover which is legitimately what that is mm-hmm. um yeah. And if you look at the color palettes, both color palettes are <laughs> similar to it, to an extent. Like one is just very cold and dreary, but it still has that like matte tones. Like it has it still has those matte tones to it. And, whereas like Call Me by Your Name is very warm, but it yeah. also feels kind of muted and matte and in, in some that, areas. I love that Guanino chose this vibrant palette of colors like getting away from the colorful stuff of the original but going more dreary in this one yeah i think that was such a great choice because i okay i I watched the first one today i thought it was fine like i i liked it but i didn't love it Mm. and i do feel personally that film felt longer than this one did for me (laughs) what yeah oh oh my goodness no i agree on such a fundamental i disagree on such a fundamental level (laughs) i feel i just didn't care what was going on in that original one but this one i cared and I, i won't deny that the original isn't like great directed and stuff i just I'm more in love with this one now. Like, I would yeah. marry this movie. Like, why not? You know, it has Robert Swinton, I... one of the most gorgeous older women in Hollywood. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All, right. All right, Zach. All right, Zach. Let's, <laughs> okay, let's, okay. let's calm down there a little bit. Uh, going, going back to the color palette real quick before I uh, send it over to Casey. Going back to that, um, you're right. And it is effective because it directly ties into what's going on in the the setting and whatnot yeah. it, it, it's tying back to to world war ii cold, cold, cold war, war or i'm sorry post world war ii cold war yeah. berlin and the like unrelenting nature um and turmoil of that time period and I, I i highly recommend everyone go watch the interview guaranino did with the build series he really just like delves deep into his thoughts about doing that um where he was talking about, you know, the original Suspiria being able to take place legitimately anywhere. It kind of has that timeless feel to it. This one, yeah. he purposefully sets during the time period because there is a direct correlation to the outside world going on. And I, I know I've said that a million times, but it, yeah. it's especially true in terms of the color palette and how it's used um, in tandem with the time period. So. Okay. Uh, the directing well I'll, I'll agree he's a great director for sure i love call me by your name i really enjoyed that movie and while i do appreciate the color palette he chose to to bring it more dull and, and cold to go in with the war i i felt he was mixing it up too much i felt like he was trying to put his own stamp do what he does best and then he was trying to attribute to things done in the original in 1977 because there are moments where like and i'm i hear it's a uh, pretty basic with his uh directing that uh, from the one in 1977 i don't know his name and even if i did i wouldn't be able to Dario pronounce Gento? it yeah him <laughs> uh he does uh these these sort of camera movements that are similar to what you would see on the office when someone makes a quick way and then yeah, the camera yeah. goes yeah. down and zoom in. Yeah, when yeah. that happened in this movie that i was like what the heck is this like i i, I didn't appreciate that and it to me it's like I, I had to have known or i had to be a critic or i had to be an extreme film buff to appreciate that other than that also the ending to me uh, well, not really the ending. Uh, it's uh, the where death comes out and it goes red, and then it's uh, stop motion or or whatever you want to call that. Yeah, I, I didn't appreciate that either. To to me, I, I think that was more to hide the the budget restraint to to hide because I, I, I'm feeling this movie was done on a low budget. Not uh, how much I mean, do you think it was? I know how much it was. Uh, uh twenty five thirty. Uh, no, it's more than that. Oh, yeah, I it. it's, it's twenty million. It's twenty. 20 million. Okay, so that, relatively, that's pretty low, actually. I, I would say, and 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 it showed with some of the prosthetics. I still appreciate they did it. I would not have wanted them to use CGI, but when it was time, because it's yeah, exploding, it towards all the Clinton's balls or whatever the fuck. <laughs> <Yeah. they have. laughs> but uh, that the exploding heads. I, I thought that would be awesome and everything, but the way they shot it, it, it ruined it for me, and, and it went by too slow, and it, it killed any sort of like, well, this is awesome, this is exceptional to me. It's like. Heads are just exploding so slowly, and I'm just there like, yeah. this is like you. This is Act 74 by now. Is this not moving that over? <laughs> My friend saw it, and he was like, "Is this like the sequel to Kingsman? Like, did they all eat the thing at the same time, and like they're all exploding <laughs> with the chip?" So, well, and, uh, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, maybe," but there's no rainbows. I, I yeah. see. So I, so I, I guess we'll kind of skip ahead to the end. I thought that was so beautiful. Can that I, that can whole I sequence. just say yeah, something Casey. first? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so just firstly, quickly, in terms of comparing Call Me By Your Name to this one, I feel like there's a lot of similarities in, like, so 
Call Me By Your Name creeped me out. And I, it didn't creep me out in like, you know. Whoa now, okay. be careful, so, Casey. No, exactly. <laughs> Apology so, video's coming. No, okay. No, 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 okay. <laughs> let me refresh, let me yes. just take a step back. Okay, so. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't creeped out by the content. Of I was course. creeped out by the way it was portrayed. So that, which made me feel really uncomfortable about watching it because I was like, this is not a concept that unsettles me. Why do I feel so weird about this? And it was, I think it was like, it was really subtle. So mm -hmm. what I feel like he does is he makes things really intimate. So they're never like sexual, but they're intimate. And mm -hmm. I don't like that. It freaks me out. Mm -hmm. So it, I think that was in Call Me By Your Name, he did that. And then he did the same thing in Suspiria because there's all these like sighs and whispers and they're all like really close. like. They get in the same bed together, but nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And like, it just, it was creepy, but where it did, where it creeped me out and called me by your name, it, it was supposed, like the movie's supposed to be creepy with Suspiria. So I felt that that worked a bit better here than it did in Call Me By Your Name. Um, See, but yeah. Way to bring up for the direction. I think you're right on that, but it actually worked more for this for me. And exactly, I do feel yeah. the same about Call Me By Your Name is there is that feeling of yeah. um dread and i like when directors can actually emplace that into a film like i just saw boy erased yeah yeah with uh directed by egerton and he made the gift and he did the same thing that he did in the gift he put him to boy erased which you wouldn't expect in boy erased but it's in there for a lot of the scenes and i think that call me by your name in a sense like griffin was saying kind of making me now think back and you're like yeah it kind of is a little bit similar in some aspects but mm -hmm. I, I think the things about suspiria is that there's so much to analyze and i'm not even gonna try i keep messing up that analyze. word but yeah, analyze. <laughs> analyze. A motherhood, um the whole like yeah. like abuse of power yeah. in a sense like mm -hmm. the, the coven and what they would go through i there's so much that you can get out of this movie. There's tons more in yeah. where we go to that story. I, I feel like as this film goes on and it, more people get to see it, I have to say that I do think like, even though I think some people do have issues with certain subplots, I think they were all there for a reason and yeah. nothing yeah, was put in there. Yeah. Even if you might not understand something, maybe later on it will. Like, Mother came out last year. We're not going to get an argument about Mother, because I think all the teams would switch around with who liked Mother and who didn't, and who doesn't even care to see it. But I liked Mother a lot. And the I reason I liked Mother a lot was because I didn't get everything. But I feel like there's more to investigate. Maybe it's just Aronofsky twiddling his own horn and saying, I can do whatever the fuck I want in the movie, which... Like, don't give yeah. off that. I'm sure Griffin if, thinks that. If, right, Griffin? If, if I may. <laughs> no, 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 no. Completely different films. No, I know. I know. No, one one is, is, one is, is a... that. Oh, okay. Ahead. Oh, no, okay. You go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> No, the thing are... is, is that no, they are completely different movies. But the thing is, is that they have these like integral bits that are the same. So they're very aggressive horror type movies that are supposed to be disgusting, but at the same time, they're supposed to make you think. And they're just created in somewhat similar ways. So they're completely different movies. But the reason that I really liked Mother is because I did understand it. I left the cinema and I was like, I had a like, I went to Catholic school. I I got like the whole like mother, I got the whole um, global warming, climate change thing. Like it was yeah. literally just this perfect microcosm of like all the things that I grew up knowing and believing and understanding. So yeah. when I left that, I was like, yes, like everything. And all my friends were like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I was like, no, this is great. And then when I watched Suspiria, I was like, yeah, it's got a lot of these aspects that I really had to like delve into and be like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I get this now. So I think that's, I yeah. don't think they're similar. They're made for similar reasons and made in similar ways and similar genres, but they are completely different. Yeah, but I mean, there's, that's there's, where I fell out of it. So yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I, I guess I kind of get the the comparison you're drawing where this film was just just way more, in my opinion, tastefully and subtly done. Whereas like something like Mother yeah. literally beats you over the head with the same mess yeah. over and over again, and it was obnoxious in my opinion yeah. um <laughs> so like and and you're right i completely got what aronofsky was going for in mother and yeah. he made his point clear um yeah in this one i kind of like having to search for everything that guaranino was going for like i i understand like a good majority of like the main things but it's like when you go back on those like repeat viewings yeah. you'll see 
um you know certain You'll scenes will pop. Yeah. yeah exactly like yeah. certain scenes yeah. will pop like I, i'll use the analogy because they're like trying to uncover the secrets of the the coven when you're like like Rewatching the film again, you'll like yeah. unlock the secrets of like other stuff that you may not have noticed, like a camera mm -hmm. movement or something like that. And I like yeah. being able to pick that up on repeat viewings as opposed to something like Mother, where it's just like it's it's very loud. Sure. Like there's an excellent there's an exclamation yeah, yeah. point after Mother for yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So, I'm still trying to figure out what that fart cloud was, the colorful thing. <laughs> I, kept up. Uh, I don't I don't know what that is. <laughs> that Griff, can you tell me? The fart cloud. <laughs> what? Oh, hey, no, no, no. Do you watch? Do you watch Rick and Morty? Yeah, that's that's what I thought. Okay, exactly. that, I, I totally get it. I totally get. It. I don't know if you two watch yeah. Rick and Morty or for I, the I've audience seen, that does. I've seen enough. Are Are you There's... talking about when she was sleeping and the little thingy? Yeah, yeah. yeah what I'm talking about. Thing. What is it it, it was just, it was just basically supposed to be like the the um the dreams that the witches were kind of like putting inside of her head. See, and that's the thing. Like so. That's where it made it not confusing. It, it was kind of yeah. cool when, when it was revealed she was Mother's of Spirit. But uh, the dreams she was having were her own. So it wasn't like they were implanting it because that was her childhood. That was how she was. I think some of them were her own and some of them were uh, Madame Blanc's. Okay. There, there were sequences in there where it's like, dude, I, I'll, I'll give you that. Those sequences were 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 totally vague and super like artsy yeah. fartsy. Because some were like a, a dirt worm, the other one was like a girl yeah. getting her, a was, hand on the iron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the hand, okay, yeah, the hand on the iron that was that was her super, childhood. Yeah, that was yeah. that was her childhood. Um, I once again, I've only seen the film one time. So well, I, it's a film that it does need repeat viewings. I think maybe well, not for Chris. Maybe he's just like, like fuck this. <laughs> fuck this. I'll go watch no. Avengers again. I'm but out. I mean, but. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like, some people will want that repeat viewings for that. And that's where I kind of get to this. To end this whole thing, we got to talk about two things. One, can we all appreciate the score? Come on now. This Dude, score Tom was amazing. Yeah. Get yeah. every 90s alt-rock band artist to score films. I swear to God, they are the best. Nah, and when you said yeah. David, Dave but... Grohl and you're... Uh... <laughs> I am like, can you just like, I love the Foo Fighters. They're my okay. favorite band of all time, but so, please so, so just have Dave Grohl do this the thing just real quickly. So some dude commented and he was like, so actually Dave Grohl played drums um, for like one of the tenacious D soundtracks. So technically <laughs> he has like, <laughs> been involved in film, which I thought was just so, yeah, which is so funny. Yeah. But anyways, I digress. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, just can, Speaking of the soundtrack, um, I was watching the new one yesterday, uh, the old one yesterday, and um, I was just like listening to it. And there's this like scene, oh and it sounds like the Footloose soundtrack. It sounds like the Footloose song. It's like dun 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 dun, 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 dun. and it's like I was watching it and I was like, oh, this is this is too much. Um, but I no, I prefer the old soundtrack, except for that. What? <laughs> I had to bring it up because I was oh, just like, man. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't. I don't agree. They're, they're they're both, now. They, they are both so good and so mm, in like, different ways, though. In completely different yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, though, is that like, so I was gonna say this before, but a lot of my issues with like the technical stuff for this film is that. A lot of people are just comparing it against the old one and saying it's like, oh, it's completely different to the old one. And in my mind, I'm like, if you're standing out against something else, is it really standing out? Because really it's just different, you know? And so that, I don't know. It's not bad. I just, it's not, you know, that's just an argument I have. But anyway. No, I get it. I get it. Um, but I love the score. I, yeah. I, I, I think it was just so different. But mm -hmm. let's talk about the length. This is the last part. Oh. I thought the length was needed, and no. I wanted more of it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> every, every time after it said third act, I was like, fourth act, this is probably the last one. Oh, fifth act. Okay, it's the last one. <laughs> that was the last one. Epilogue. Shoot myself. That, no. <laughs> Imagine was, that, but knowing that there are seven. I was like, oh, we're up to number two. And then I was like, fuck, we're still just on number three. Yeah. Okay, that's number four. I was like, oh, come on. Uh, see, and can I be honest? I, I think it helped the story. But at the same time, I actually don't like when movies do that. I think it helped this no. film. But sometimes when it's like, or Probably anything Land, in that it. genre. Uh, yeah. Well, but see, like, I'm playing Red Dead Redemption right now. And they do chapter okay. one, chapter two, chapter three. <laughs> and I know how many chapters are in this. And I'm just trying to beat the game at this point. I'm like, okay, on chapter six. <laughs> 
Come on now, I know there's two more when we get into the next one. <laughs> I kind of look at it like you're reaching checkpoints. Yeah. Uh, and it was kind of yeah. like, ooh, okay, something different's going to happen now. And then something different happened. Yeah, so good, it was yeah. kind of it was it was a weird mental game that I enjoyed, but also like it would be one of those things where it's like, wow, we've been in this like chapter for a while now and then it would switch yeah. to another one. I'm like, "Oh, cool." So yeah. <laughs> I, I liked the the six act structure. I thought it was a really um interesting way of breaking I it. I like the peach one. I thought that was a funny little nod to yeah. uh, when I saw the peach, I was thinking of the peach scene from Call Me By Your Name. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, but I thought that that's the first thing. That, every time I see a peach now, I'm just like, yeah. yeah I kinda, that's the I one kinda. thing I don't like about Call Me By Your Name. <laughs> Everyone I'm so yeah, sorry. but so many people I, love it. It's like the weird thing. I'm just like I, 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 I want to meet one of those people and do that with them and then be like is this oh, fucking cool no, to you no, still no. <laughs> yeah. i watched caught me by your name with like a friend like a oh. male friend and so i just like went in there like, i was like watching it and i was like mm, i feel really uncomfortable by this movie and then we got to that scene and like we both just kind of like separated <laughs> just, yeah. like, i think parents should watch that like, with their kids that just that no, song no yeah 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 no. like sit them down and be like son if you ever do this well, speaking yeah, of that, son. speaking an of apple. That, what what is the w the most awkward film you've ever watched with your parents? Because we were at Case and I were having that conversation oh, yeah. like a couple days yeah. ago. Airplane. Oh, yeah, I still can't believe you said airplane, man. Dude, when the tits came out and it's like, <laughs> I'm just like, this is a PG movie. What the fuck? No, um, I think honestly, if I'm being straight up with that, th there's two. Um, one is the town. And it's because my grandma took me to see it. And I, we looked up. We looked up. Because she's like, I'll take you to see like whatever movie you want. As long as there's no nudity. So I look up on like IMDb. Nothing about sex at all. Fucking right off the bank eyes. He's fucking doing it. Here girl. And I'm like, oh, come on now. Like, seriously, I'm just sitting there. I pull up my phone. And I'm just like, yeah. And then the second one. The second one is either. um, It's either Your Highness. With. Uh, and I didn't. I didn't mean to watch it with them, but they came downstairs and like, oh, can I join you? I'm like, sure. And I paused it, and the scene it was paused on was when they cut the dick off, and it's just hanging around their neck. Oh, <laughs> that's weird. Uh, yeah. To me, to me, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's not that well known. It's called Spread with Ashton Kutcher. Yep. I have okay. seen it, but yeah, that, that was the name. Yeah. that was just like a red box rent because my mom loves Aston Kutcher, so I was like, "All right, sure, whatever." I haven't heard anything about this, and we saw it, and it's just him sleeping with rich women to you know live a good life, and too much Aston Kutcher. Hey, what about Freddie Got Fingered? Oh my god! <laughs> no, I I still think yours is like the weirdest. Griffin watches Dracula, mm -hmm. uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula Bram, with his parents. Yeah, Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> oh my <laughs> parents love that movie. It's great. You get it's to a see a, a bat, like, a bat mm -hmm. ape, like just fuck this girl in a courtyard. <laughs> it's it's funny. You want to talk about snap zooms used in like a funny manner uh, <laughs> when when fucking um winona rider like walks out and sees it happening it just like does this quick snap to like dracula's face and he just turns his head and, like what is this <laughs> i love see every time but like going to chris he's mentioned the office now can we get a video of john krasinski and like him playing jim again watching suspiria can someone please make this <laughs> yeah, uh, where yeah, like yeah. every time something happens to suspiria it just zooms on him he's like <laughs> <laughs> okay but yeah. uh, other other than brom Stoker's dracula hands down girl with the dragon tattoo that rape scene is not fun that is oh, just no. brutal. Not. that is so no. messed up um, yeah uh, rape's yeah. not a good thing in movies it's hard to watch that <laughs> yeah. or in life or in life. yeah <laughs> you know you know what you know what movie like my dad hates like we watched a movie together and he hated it and it was yeah. the most awkward thing in my life because he hated it so much and it was the nice guys and I love that movie. What? And he hated the nice guys. He Bring him he, in here. he contends Suicide Squad <laughs> is better than the nice guys. And oh, I'm just dear. like, no, no, dad, no. So Suspiria. Yeah. yeah. Suspiria. This is the Suspiria film you want to watch with your parents. This is definitely your parents, the best yeah. film of the year. Wow. You definitely want to watch it with your parents, your family, your grandma, mm -hmm. everyone all together. Experience something different together. And I know Luca Guanino is talking about doing a prequel to this movie. And so go please, please go support this movie so we can get a prequel to this about... Because do you guys know what he was talking about with the prequel? Uh, he's yeah, possibly he was... Madame Blanc or Marcos. He said... Yeah. 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 I want it. I want it. I personally would like to see him 
do a sequel kind of tackling like the the witches trilogy thing the three months yeah. i have a theory the that thing. yeah i have a theory that madame blanc has actually been in contact with uh the mother of tears because in that scene where one of the girls is about to go into the mirror room she's, mm -hmm. she's just tearing up and and, and mm -hmm. those aren't regular tears those are like jelly tears i don't know <laughs> yeah. when you're watching that so i, I feel a, like yeah, that's, that's a hint towards I, I think he that's will and i think yeah. luca because i mean Everyone, I, I don't know if you guys know, David Gordon Green was supposed to direct this movie. Yeah, oh. yeah, he was. Yeah, and Guadagnino took it over, and I, right, I, I think it's just his passion for it. Well, I mean, he, like he said, like he wanted to make his version ever since he was like thirteen or fourteen, and I remember, yeah, like he, I don't know if he necessarily wanted Gordon Green to direct it. It was that like he some he like approached, um, like once Guadagnino got the rights, he like approached Gordon Green and asked if he wanted to be involved with it. I don't know whether that was like just screenwriting or yeah, whether he wanted him to direct it, but I found that like really ironic because he has like Halloween in theaters right now. So yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. I don't know, but I think this is where we're going to leave our final thoughts on this. We've discussed it in spoilers. We're going to go through it again. Casey, have your, has your mind changed at all? Do you still feel the same? <laughs> It has. We convinced her. Yeah, <laughs> this is a mouse. Thanks, okay, guys. So. Um, I'm out. Uh, I joined the positive side. No, um, I think ultimately I was always pretty on board with the story and the way that that was told, particularly uh, just like so. Kajanik, who wrote it, basically just he was like bored with the original story and he was like, I'm going to make this about the witches and about their dynamic and the matriarchy and all those sorts of things. So I was very on board with I want to join them. I want to join the witch coven. <laughs> well, you can't because you're a man. <laughs> so I can't. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so I was always really on board with that um, in terms of the other stuff. I still feel like a drag. I still feel like there was, yeah, a lot of, yeah, no. I'm still on the fence, basically. So, no, I'm about okay. the same. All right. Chris, what about you? Me, opinion's not going to change at all. Never will. <laughs> Never. If it does, <laughs> I have been cloned. But... <laughs> Uh, but honestly, no. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating my point. This was not a horrible movie. It was not trash. It wasn't garbage. It just, it just wasn't for me. I just didn't have any yeah. emotional connection to it other than the Dr. Kempler story. But overall, it was just a movie I watched once, and I don't think I'll ever get back to, uh, to watching. If you loved it, I'm happy for you. That's great. I don't want to take anything away from you. It's just, it just it was not for me. Can I contend real fast before we move on? Can we please do a live watch along to Suspiria when it comes out on Blu-ray? <laughs> Yes. All right, fine. For that, I will. Yeah. Oh, okay. We need to, we need to have someone that hasn't watched it, though. Yeah, we okay. Need to, Very we true. need to watch okay, it we'll and then we'll have someone that hasn't so that we can just be like, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And we'll, we'll make someone be the middle person. So make sure to tell yeah. one person you know not to watch it. Not to watch yeah. it. Yeah. That won't be hard. Yeah. All right. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. But, uh, Griff, anything changed in your mind? You still feel the same? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. I, yeah, I mean, I, I've, like, become obsessed, like, digging deep into this film. Great um, video you made, man. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. That was... I don't usually do that, so the fact that I felt compelled to do that shows you how much I, like, got out of this and how much, like, I enjoy just, like, reflecting upon it. So, and Suspiria um, replied to your tweet as well. I know! That's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That goals right there. Um, but anyways, yeah, I mean, like, I don't, I don't want to take up too much. If, if you, honestly, if you do want to hear my thoughts, go check out my video, because I, I basically lay them all out there. But, um, yeah, I, if you're even remotely considering to go, like, wanting to go see this film, I would just say go see it. You may hate it, you may like it, but at least you'll experience something different, so... <laughs> You know, and I agree. I think that's where I think if it's a hard film in a sense to recommend, but at the same time, like if you're even intrigued to see it, why are you watching this? Why why are you watching any review? Just go see it. Because that's the thing. Yeah. Everyone's gonna get something different out of this film. I, I I like Griff. Do you like if someone comes to you and says, "I hate this movie," do you understand? Like that's how I am. Like I totally get it if you hate this film. I mean, I would ask why because. I, I mean, I'm just genu <laughs> gen genuinely curious. Like, I, I, I mean, I completely acknowledge it's not a film for everyone. Um, but if they say it's like, I had some guy comment on my video and he was like, this movie was trash. It was a poorly made film. And I'm like, well, that's not true. You just, it just didn't sit right with you, which that's fine. But don't blame it on the filmmaking because the filmmaking is, is like top notch. That's this like yeah. expert level filmmaking. Oh yeah. Like I, I loved it. And I thought the, the filmmaking was very smart, but I think that's where we can cut this at. Guys, it's up to you guys to decide who won this debate. Was it me and Griff? 
Or was it Chris and Casey? I feel like we were all wow. ended up on the same side somehow. Uh, yeah, I feel like we just... <laughs> <laughs> did we even... My question is, did we even really say that many spoilers? Ooh. I don't think so. I think we did. We said like a couple things, but... Yeah. Everyone dies really. at the end, and Dakota oh, Johnson yeah. is Mother Suspirium. Sexy as hell. Yeah. And someone pees. Oh, someone pees. Oh, and until and <laughs> eat some chicken. Yeah. And <laughs> tiny police dick. <laughs> <laughs> that scene was so funny. I'm telling you, I, I don't, I don't want to be one of those people, and I don't want to drag those people into the comment section. But the, there is an argument for feminist propaganda that the only male characters are the ones that are played with and exposed in that way. Just, saying. I think that's just that's just witches. That's just witches in the past. I feel like that's yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. What about the, the poster? Does look like a vagina though. Well, I mean, her her chest that was so purpose that was done completely yeah. on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, you want to hear a hot take though? Let me tell yeah. you this: the Suspiria is better than anything American Horror Story has ever made. They have their own American Horror Story theme songs in there when it's going through the different imagery. <laughs> this is better than any American Horror Story ever made. Just I mean, considering the fact that I've never watched American Horror Story, yeah, same. I'll, I'll believe Good. it. Sure. But all right, <laughs> I'll to these guys. So, Casey, where can they find you at? Uh, so my name is Casey Causley, and it's Casey Causley everywhere on uh, Twitter. Um, what's my Twitter name? Oh, the old woman is a scroll. Um, that's my like screen name for Twitter at the moment. Uh, but yeah, so Casey Causley everywhere. Awesome, awesome. Make sure you go subscribe to her. She's doing the thousand and one challenge, right? Is that is that yeah. thousand one movie? Yeah, pro uh, yeah, project. Go check it out. It's really cool. I wish I had the dedication to do that, but I don't. Uh, Chris from 3C Films, where can they find you at, man? Yeah, you can find me at youtube.com slash 3C Films and on Twitter at 3C Film Review. Please, I, I'm much nicer to other movies than this. Yeah, no, no, no. Seriously, this guy gave Night School a better rating. <laughs> I did. Oh, I you did. I, I, I love wish you short didn't tell jokes, me that. okay? I, I just... wish you never told me that. <laughs> I really <laughs> wish. No. Different things, though. Different I'm... things. I, I will say. I will say. This is a better movie overall. The Suspiria, the you Night School. I just Night School. <laughs> I just enjoyed Night School. Yeah, but it was nice having you. Enjoyability. If you guys want to know, and if you're confused by an ending to a movie. He's got you. You want to know some Easter eggs? Go check it out. Because I don't know how you do it. Like, you can watch one movie and pick all these things out. And I'm like, man, I can look <laughs> notepad at Notepad in the theater. That's what I do. Little notepad in the theater. See, and that's what I, I was so about distracting for me. Like, yeah, I, I've tried it. I tried doing that for The Greatest Showman. And I just threw my notebook on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I that movie on the floor. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> No. Shall we go into another debate about <laughs> the current greatest showman? <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about that. But uh, <laughs> where can they find you, man? Uh, yeah, I was actually about to compliment Chris on his rating no, scale. On, I don't even think I want to do that anymore. After that. <laughs> uh, he legitimately has the best rating scale ever. He no, like breaks you, everything Chris. down so nicely. I love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways. Uh, so yeah, you guys can follow <laughs> I don't know where I was going. I th there was like a segue into good, that. Yeah, like, there was good. a reason I. You're I, making I, Casey I, uncomfortable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know. Go check out Casey's vlogs and everything. She's, yeah. And she's doing the 1001 movie challenge. <laughs> the only I like that's the only thing you know. It's <laughs> like, what does it mean? No. <laughs> No, and you, I, I read your Suspiria script, and it's excellent. So you're gonna go yeah. like deep into stuff on that, which I, I enjoy. The only reason I brought up his rating scale is, I, is I, I think Zach said something that triggered like a ooh, in my head. But anyway, anyways, yeah. If you <laughs> like me and my stupidity, you can go follow me on Twitter at Griff Schiller. Uh, you can like Men versus Movies on Facebook. Follow it on Twitter. Just Men versus Movies. Um, subscribe to the channel. I do movie reviews. I just saw Fantastic Beasts today, so probably have a review out for that whenever the embargo lifts. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> so you'll see his review next week. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie Redmayne is a really nice guy. There you go. Threw it out there. Talk hey. to me, right? Yeah. Uh I mean, he, he probably would fuck you. But, uh, <laughs> let's, let's guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching this debate. We want to hear what your guys' thoughts were. Were you on the side of Chris and Casey, or were you on the side of me and Griff? Or were you just like, fuck you guys? I don't like you guys at all, and I don't agree with you, and Suspiria is a piece of shit all together. 
Let's get talking about it down below in the comments. If you guys are new here, hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure to go subscribe to all these lovely people. Plus, go over to Sandwich on Films also if you guys want to go check out some movies early. I know we are doing a giveaway, I think, for Boy Erased right now. So go check that out. I really like that movie. I can't wait to review that. But thank you guys so much for watching this. And until next time, you guys stay classy. We'll